Welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the nation's dailies and make sense of it. Another program, I'm being joined by seasoned analyst Ezekiel Yayatok. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. Thank you. For Fantastic. Having me. So first off, we're starting this morning with the Guardian newspaper. And the headlines here says, new tariffs push prices above, above global average. New tariffs push prices above global average. And it says here, Nigeria is among OPEC's most expensive petroleum products. Sixth highest electricity tariff in Africa. And uh, it will soon be cheaper to import saturated water than to produce. Nigerians blame poor power supply on regulatory prices. And uh, NUEE, NECA, can vast metering consumers before tariff review. So here we're talking about the tariff hikes uh, in two key sectors. Uh, and also we see the story here on the Guardian newspaper. It says, Nigeria abandons vision 20, 2020, dreams agenda 2050. Plans to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty and the federal government inaugurates steering committee. And there are a few other key issues here on the Guardian newspaper. It's talking about uh, Nigeria's debt profile. It's saying Nigeria's debt profile hit three trillion, three trillion naira. Okay, so would you like to uh, talk a bit about this uh, tariff hike, uh, Mr. Etok? Okay, um, again, pleasure to be here. Uh, looking at the Guardian, I actually see a lot of um, stories that catch my fancy, positively or negatively. I don't know, as we go on, we'll get to realize. Look at the issue of the new tariffs, which is uh, the major headline. And then we talk about the Agenda 2050, which is the next. And then we also have the issue of the debt profile, and there's a little story that I would like us to um, look at. And that's the story of the film, A uh, But let's go back to the tariff. Um, under normal circumstances, when we have governors that is trusted by the people, there are certain imperatives that um, we cannot run away from. One is that no businessman will invest in a system where he cannot get reasonable returns on his investment. Uh, so what a lot of governments do is that they give what they call cost-reflective tariff, but where such tariffs are, are, are injurious, I would say, to the common man, where the government has a primary objective of uh, protecting his interest, what government does is to go ahead and give either sweetener, sweeteners to such companies to make sure that um, they are able to operate profitably, but within margins that is affordable. Or they go an extra mile and give what they call subsidies, which we are used to. Now, all these are done just to make sure that the, the, the goods, the deliverables come to the common man, especially necessary goods like power and um, like um, petrol uh, or diesel. Now, the problem that we have right now is that we have government that is weak financially, and yet we have systems that must be run profitably. Balancing between the two needs a government that is trusted by the people. Unfortunately, our present governments are not trusted by the people. For instance, you know, time was when the, the, the present government said, when we take the, 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 the differential between what, we, what you get and the, the savings on account of the, uh, of, of, of the differential between the pump price and what comes in, well, we're, we're asking you to pay a little more so that we can use that differential to fix our refineries which will be the ultimate solution to the issue of petrol. Now, the question is, Nigerians accepted and they paid the differential. They, made, they bought at the pump price. Now, the question is, has government come to tell us, number one, this is the amount of savings that was made during the process, and number two, this is what we did with it. 
So with these sort of things where government is not trusted by the people, even the necessary becomes a challenge. That's basically what you have on the tariffs. And each time they keep telling us comparative analysis, oh, it's cheaper in Nigeria than elsewhere and everything. The Guardian did a good job by giving us African countries. And they gave us countries where <laughs> the, the petrol was cheaper by far. No, not even petrol this time. But the kilowatt hour that we pay for for light was cheaper by far. If I just give you one, Sudan, for instance, pays um, a little over one naira per kilowatt hour. Okay, that's Sudan. Algeria, 16 naira. But Nigeria is 62 point, um, a little over 62 naira. The question is, how many of our people have we sent to Sudan, to Algeria, to Ethiopia, to Libya, all these African countries to know what secret they deployed to be able to have power within such a low range? We are the giants, so we should be the leaders in serving our people. Hmm. Now, there's so much that I could go on on that um, issue of um, tariffs. Exactly, but, but, we, but we, unfortunately, so we have to go to the like point to Let's talk paper. About we have to go to the point paper, unfortunately, right now because we're a bit behind time. And the, the, the headline story wow. on the point here is talking about uh, borrowing. It says Nigeria yeah. borrowed 18.89 trillion naira under the regime of President Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, it's a report here by The Punch, and it, uh, it gives highlights here to the story, saying federal state government's debts rise by 2.38 trillion naira, and it hits 31 trillion naira. It also says that Lagos, Rivers, and Akwaibon post the highest debts. Wow, that's a lot. It also says here that uh, pipeline repairs cost NNPC 41.98 billion naira in six months. That's 41 point, almost uh, uh, 42 billion naira to repair, vandalized or damaged pipelines in uh, six months in Nigeria. And uh, this story here uh, says, I am ready to testify against Magu. And that's Malami speaking. Trader money beneficiaries unwilling to repay loans. NSIP here filing a complaint about beneficiaries allegedly being unwilling to repay the trader money uh, loans granted to them. We also see here a story on the Punch newspaper on the Malibu fraud. FG asks Shell ENI to pay $1.92 billion uh, damages, among several other stories uh, on the front page of The Punch this morning. But can we uh, talk uh, briefly on uh, the boring here? We saw the story uh, on The Guardian, it we just talked about, and here, here it is again on the front page of The Punch, seeing that Nigeria has borrowed 18.89 trillion naira under the regime of President Mohamed Buhari. What's your thoughts on this, Mr. Itok? Okay, um... The first thing is that unless we interrogate <coughs> governance and understand why people get into governance, we will not understand the concept of borrowing. People get into governance not to solve the problems of the nation or of the state. No, that's not their primary objective for getting into governance. It's about self. It's about what they can get. As a result, I have a tenor of say four years or eight years max. Now, all I need is how much money can I get from wherever to do two things. One, undertake projects that will show that, oh, when I was governor or when I was president, I, I did this, I did that. That's about personal ego. And second, I need projects that I can get money from to execute the next um, election. Because after four years or eight years, I will leave. And most loans are not like Nigeria loans that are like short term, three months, six months, one year, two years. Most loans are like 10 years, 15 years. So you really couldn't be bothered. What all you just want to do is do your part and exit. And that mentality is, is, I don't blame the people that get into government. I blame those of us that put them in government. A time has come when we have to start the process of interrogating the people that we are setting up to manage our common patrimony. There's too much laxity in the recruitment process in Nigeria. So this loan problem, I've sat down, I've looked at it, I've interrogated it. Why would somebody not really think in terms of how can I generate funds you know, internally? 
How can I make sure that I manage what I have to produce what I want? What are the most basic things? What must I do? What do I not necessarily have to do? All these monies that we are borrowing, I want to know somebody who has come to show me value for money that we've gotten. And today, somebody, I saw one interesting, do I call it interesting, sad commentary. They say Federal uh, Nigeria, Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria, Republic of China, something like that. And when you look at these loans, I think the time has come when external bodies should come out and interrogate governments. That's what Nati are like, what they are doing. I'm also very upset with what the CBN is doing with NESG because this NESG was becoming a private body that was starting to interrogate things and government doesn't like it. And I want to say the people in, in, in Central Bank, are, where they may have enabling laws, I don't, I don't dispute that, but I know that when you leave government, you'll be on the other side of the aisle. And when you're on the other side of the aisle, you will look at the things that you did while you were on seat. So that much about our loan profile, it will continue to be so unless we stop and you know, recalibrate and look at what government is all about, the essence of governance and the sort of people that should get into government. Hmm. That is very important. Now, all right, aside Mr. from that, we talk about um, Agenda uh, 2020. That Agenda 2020. No, 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 that was in there. Uh, yeah, that was at the uh, Guardian, yes, money. please. Trader now, money. Let me, yeah, let me spend, yes, let me take a little time here about politics. It beats my wildest imagination that a man like my vice president, to whom I hold in highest esteem, who is not just enlightened, who is not just a, a, a senior advocate of Nigeria, but who is a professor, will get into the market, give somebody money, and then come back and wonder why the man is not paying back. I'll give you a little story. I contested governorship in 2019, and there were things I said I wanted to do. Now, when I didn't win the governorship, I said, well, the things I wanted to do at larger scale, I can do it at smaller scale if I was sincere with it. I said entrepreneurship was very important to me. I was just a few of my friends. If you tell me what you can do with 50 to, to no, no, 10 to 50,000, maximum 100,000 naira, come pitch your ideas with me. Now, over 800 applied online immediately. I thought it was a joke. I said, if you are serious, come to my office. Almost 500 came. Now, this is the point. I sat them down and I told them what I wanted to do. You have to pitch and give me a workable idea. Number two, this is a loan. So you've got to pay. The only thing is that it has no tenor, it has no interest rate. Do you know what happened? About 50 of the people left because they thought this was political money that didn't have to be paid back. Now, what's instructive is this. You go to market, you give somebody money. You haven't told the person the terms and conditions. The person has not been given an offer and has given you an acceptance. The person has not committed himself to the loan. You just give him the money in the market, and then you come back. What if that person was one of the 50 or 49 people that said, oh, I thought this was political money. Sorry, I don't want to take the loan and the left. You give this little money in the market and you come back and you're wondering why they're not paying back. What was the social contract you had with them? So I think that we need to start to you know, think of governance, not from political angle, but from an enlightened uh, uh, angle. We need to come to the point of what I call cerebral governance. That's the only thing that will save this nation from the rot and the nonsense that we're going through on a daily basis. And that is very, 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 you know, no, disheartening to me. All right, Mr. Etto. You go um, to issue of... Um, yes, we have to go to the right. Nation newspaper right now. And the story here is still, as we saw on The Guardian, talking about uh, uh, the anger growing as government defense patrol and power rates increase. You know, people are agitated about that. Uh, the story here is saying market forces now determine prices and tariffs and that Senate may soon reconvene on this issue. Uh, let's uh, also see the stories here. It's talking uh, uh, here. It says government lifts restrictions on uh, markets and stores, cinemas, gyms to reopen, curfew now 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. A story here on page 25 of the nation says, Lagos Ogun seek Buhari's nod to fix Lagos Ota Abekuta Road. And uh, 
still here on The Nation, the top page of The Nation, talking about the Edo Ondo elections. It says, uh, George withdraws from suit against Ize Iyamu. Hello. Can yes, I, Mr. Edo. Yes, we'll apologize for that uh, uh, issue there. The story, the correct story on The uh, Nation this morning says, APC PDP in crossfire over patrol and electricity rate hike. Still the story highlighted on The Guardian this morning. Ruling party accuses opposition of hypocrisy and government risk people's anger. And on Edo election 2020, Izeyamu vows to reactivate NNPC depot. Obasaki's commissioner resigns. APC Shraibu in verbal war over alleged arms dealing plot. Still the stories we've seen on other newspapers, Nigeria's dead case rising to 31 trillion naira, striking doctors to be paid, four billion naira allowance in, four, in two weeks, and Mackinde fire shade in Cold War. Mr. Etok, we had uh, the vice president of NAD, the second vice president of NAD, uh, just on the breakfast earlier this morning, and he spoke about the agreements reached with the federal government and the possibility of ending the strike. So I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the government says they may end the strike today, but uh, uh, Mr. Julian confirmed to me that that's not happening because the agreement is yet to be reached. So what do you have to say about issues like this, uh, the striking doctors, you know, they are uh, asking uh, the government for certain things, and then Dif both parties giving out different responses to the media about the strike being called off and the other party saying that's not the case. Yeah, it, it all comes down to the same thing. Governance, governance, deceit, deceit, lack of focus, lack of direction, lack of priorita prioritization, lack of understanding of what section 2, chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b of our constitution says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. How do you talk of welfare of the people without health? How is health different? I mean, welfare starts with health because without life, there's nothing else that comes in. And welfare, health comes with the issue of medicine, comes with the issue of doctors, comes with the issue of our health policy. Now, there was a story some days back of, I think it was a minister of state or something that said, well, let's go and recruit um, uh, youth coppers and consultants as a top gap for all this stuff. I, I just find that maybe because my wife is, is a medical doctor and I understand, though I'm an architect, the implications or the ramifications of such a statement. The, the NYAC um, doctors, with all due respect, you know, I have architects come from, 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 from the colleges, from the schools to, to work with me, and, and, and they can't even define architecture. Education has become so terrible that these graduates, you really don't even know, not to talk of doctors, they're not any much different. There are certain things I wouldn't want to say here, but the fact is, for you to think of the coppers who are supposed to come in and be trained properly, practically, to become stop gap, it means you just have no idea of what healthcare delivery is all about, or you just couldn't be bothered. It's not, it's not important to you. You think that you can carry your money, uh, maybe $20,000, and keep in the gate house. You won't do that. You take it to the bank to the vault. Health is not something you hand over to anybody. So coming back to this, I want to appeal to government, while also appealing to doctors that they should know government has no money. They should know that. Though the government keeps fighting itself as if they have money, they don't have no money. So let's find a middle ground and let government just be honest with these doctors, appeal to them, talk nicely to them, don't talk down on them, don't threaten them. They are putting their lives on the line to save us. And let the well-meaning Nigerians also reach out. I know the efforts like the National Consultative Front is doing in appealing to doctors, you know, to say, look, we know that you're offering good services, please just bear with us. The nation is going through hard times. And their response is like, what sort of hard times are they going through when we are seeing the lifestyle that they are living? And that's the disconnect. You tell us to tighten our belt because things are difficult. Meanwhile, we are getting fatter because we are feeding fat on our common patrimony. So these are the challenges that we have. 
Also mm. in the Guardian, uh, sorry, in the no, Nation. Um, we're actually going to the Tribune right now. I'm sorry, Mr. Etok. And the story here still still hitting on the debt profile of Nigeria rising by 2.38 trillion naira in three months and hitting 31 trillion naira. Uh, this story here also says Trump nominated for Nobel Peace Award, and that's on page 24. The story is still here. PDP Atiku stands hypocritical, and that's APC speaking on the petrol price hike. And here on marginalization, Adaku, Mantu, others float North Central People's Forum. We also see the stories here on the striking doctors saying they've reached their agreement with the federal government to call off the strike today. Benue, Ghana's road to amnesty killing. I was shocked by his killing, and that's autumn speaking. Uh, a couple of other stories here on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, this uh, one says, FG approves 400 million naira to fence University of Abuja. A 400 million naira to fence the University of Abuja. And we here we see that uh, uh, the, the COVID-19, uh, AstraZeneca pauses COVID-19 vaccine trial after unexplained illnesses. Ondo 2020, Ijo Group disowns, uh, apologizes, and disowns Ajayi. So many other stories here, uh, as well as this one, Malami to Magu. I will appear before Salami panel if, and the rest of that story is continued on page 30. So would you still like to talk about uh, uh, this story here on, uh, on uh, the Nigerian Tribune? This one talking about uh, FG approving a total sum of 400 million naira to fence Uni Abuja just when doctors are striking and making demands for their welfare. Yeah, um, two things. They are not mutually exclusive, I would say. The fencing of University of Abuja is extremely important. Extremely important. And I will commend the federal government for doing that. The only little snag I have in that is that I'm an architect. And um, by the time you want to use uh, 400 million to fence that, I'm happy I've seen the figure. I want to ask, please, what is the perimeter, you know, the total perimeter run of the, of the layout of the University of Abuja? I would like to know that. When I know that, I will know, I know different types of fencing. Anyone you can think of, I will know what to do. And I will say, please, please, I'm offering service free here. Give that 400 million, don't award the contract. Give that 400 million to University of Abuja. I will go and help them free of charge to do direct labor fencing and they will use less than half that money. And then the rest of the money can go into helping the doctors or the whatever the medical section in the University of Abuja. I'm offering on a free service. I'll not take a dime. I'll work with the natives. Fence is nothing, nothing to write to to break your hairs over. So let them give that 400 million. Stop awarding all these contracts that just don't make sense. I'm doing an estate that is about um, about five five hectares. And I know how much I'm using for the fencing. I've just completed the fencing. I know what to do. Please give that money to them. A dime will not come to me. I will go there. I'll tell them what to do. Direct labor. The people will get a lot of money there and they will use less than half. If it's more than half the money, I undertake to pay the difference right, as Mr. a Nigerian Eto. who has come to mislead others, in quote. But if I am right, all I need is for the federal government to say, Thank you. That's all I need. A thank you note. All right, Mr. Etok, there's so many, so many issues to discuss and so little time. Unfortunately, uh, we're, we're out of time at the moment, uh, Mr. Etok. We look forward to doing this again on Off the Press uh, another time. But it's a wrap here on Off the Press, and we'll be back with The Breakfast.